Even if I rotate one way or the other, the hand is always pointing in the same direction. I can also do a full rotation like this, and the hand is always pointing in the same direction. I'm at the Beijing Automotive Museum in China, a place dedicated to the history and technology of, well, cars. And you may think that a video from here will be about the birth of the Chinese automotive industry, or perhaps some uh, unique engine design. And you could be right, there are plenty of those stories here. But I'm here to see a vehicle that predates the internal combustion engine by about 2,000 years. And it has no engine. It carries no passengers in the traditional sense. And its single most important feature is something that in practice could not possibly have worked. And yet the idea was so brilliant that it was invented and reinvented multiple times over the course of a millennium. This is a replica of the Zhe Nan Che, which translates to the South Pontine Chariot. And it does exactly what the name implies. No matter how you turn the chariot, left, right, or in full circles, the figure on top will always point in the same cardinal direction it was set to at the beginning of the journey. Not through magnetism, the compass was not invented yet, and anyway was not used for navigation for a long time, but through pure mechanics. This is, in essence, an ancient mechanical compass, and the story of how it was meant to work, and why it certainly didn't work in practice, is a fantastic lesson in the difference between theory and the messy reality of the real world. The story of the South Pontine Chariot begins in legend. We have to go back to the 27th century BCE, to a mythical figure known as the Yellow Emperor, Wang Di. The legend goes that he was in a battle with a rival tribal leader, Shi Yu. Shi Yu, a powerful sorcerer, summoned a thick fog to disorient the emperor's army. So what do you do when you are a legendary emperor with a magical enemy? You invent a technological solution, of course. The Yellow Emperor, so the story goes, ordered the construction of the very first South Pontine Chariot. This device allowed his army to navigate through the fog, find the enemy, and win the battle. It's a great story, but it is just that, a story. There is no archaeological evidence for the chariot to be that old, and the level of mechanical sophistication would have been staggering for that period. The first historical verified South Pontine chariot comes much, much later. We have reliable text documenting its creation by a brilliant mechanical engineer named Ma Jun, who lived during the Three Kingdom period, around 250 AD, a bit less than 2000 years ago. Ma Jun was a polymath a sort of ancient Chinese Leonardo da Vinci, and his chariot was said to have been a marvel of its time. The secret to its seemingly magical ability wasn't magical at all, it was hidden away, right down here. The secret is a beautiful clever arrangement of gears known as differential. A differential is a fundamental technology in any modern car. It allows wheels which are connected on the same axis to rotate at different speeds, and this is fundamental when a car is turning. Uh, on the south pointing chariot, uh, the differential was uh, working on a, with a different purpose to keep the axis in the center pointing the same direction. And we will see this uh, in detail uh, using this uh, prototype over here. So this uh, prototype, uh, I bought it online here in China. It's very easy to find them. Uh, the South Point in Chariot is, uh, is very popular. Uh, so there are many different prototypes, but this is particularly beautiful. It's realized in wood and is uh, uh, very similar to uh, the descriptions that we can find in text. Because I want to point out that actually none of the original devices uh, uh, survived uh, to us. We lost them around 1300 AD. Uh, but we have good descriptions of them, uh, and uh, even though we're not 100% sure of how the gears uh, uh, were put together, uh, this is one of the most common design uh, and uh, more accepted designs of this chariot. So let's look close uh, how this works. I pointed the figure towards the left. Let's see first of all how this works, okay? So I can push the chariot back and forth, and you can see that the hand is always pointing in the same direction. And even if I rotate one way or the other, the hand is always pointing in the same direction. I can also do a full rotation like this, and the hand is always pointing in the same direction. So why that's the case? How does it work exactly? So to do so, let's look at the gears from, from close. Okay? So the first thing to notice is that the gears are not symmetric. Okay? So one side and the other side are slightly different. And the important gears are these gears in the center, so this one over here, which I will call 
the top center gear. And this gear on the bottom that uh, I call the bottom center gear. And then there is this gear, the small gear over here, which is the center vertical uh, uh, small gear. Okay. So what happens is that uh, this gear here is not actually locked uh, with the figure and neither this gear over here. What is locked with the figure is the axis of the center small gear. So if the center small gear rotates, then the figure rotates and vice versa. If I rotate the figure, then the center axis, the axis of, of the small center gear will rotate as well. So this shows that the figure rotates if the axis of the small center gear rotates. Okay. Now let's see what happens when I move this wheel and I move it backward. If I move this wheel backward, there is a, a gear that connects to this bottom gear. Okay. So I go backward and the bottom gear rotates clockwise. And then this pushes this center bottom gear that is going to rotate anti-clockwise. You can see. Now, as the center bottom gear rotates anti-clockwise, it pushes along the vertical small gear, which will roll around. As the small gear rolls, the axis will rotate, and so the figure rotates. Now, let's see what happens if I do the same on the other side. Now, here, again, I'm moving the same direction, so backward. But now what happens is that this wheel is moving in anti-clockwise direction, and so the top wheel, so these two wheels are locked, are locked together. So it moves anti-clockwise and this will push the top in clockwise direction. So opposite to respect to before, despite it's the same direction. Now what happens is that uh, the wheel on top is pushing the center vertical wheel along. And again, the figure, as you can see, is rotating in the same direction as the center gear. Now what happens when we rotate both uh, wheels. So keep an eye on this gear over here. So you see that uh, as I move uh, back and forth, uh, the gear in the center stays still. This is uh, because uh, the top gear and the bottom gear, they both rotate, they rotate in opposite direction, and this allow the, allows the center gear to just rotate, uh, to just rotate in place, okay? So it, the axis does not have to move along. And this will keep the figure still. So the figure does not move because the axis does not move. But if I rotate the chariot, then you see that actually what happens is that the gear in the center, the axis of the gear in the center is rotating. And so is the figure. Now the figure does not rotate with respect to me. Okay, so it's always pointing in the same direction. But with respect to the chariot, it is rotating. So you can see that the figure is pointing to the wheel but if I rotate in this way, now the figure is not pointing to the wheel anymore. It's pointing in the same direction with respect to me. And so this is how it works. It's a wonderful device. It's very simple. And yet it's super clever. The concept of using a differential, something we consider a cornerstone of modern automotive tech, was being explored almost two millennia ago. For centuries, the secret of its construction was closely guarded, almost a state secret. Historical records tell us uh, that the knowledge uh, was lost and then reinvented uh, by different engineers in different dynasties, like Yan Tzu in the 11th century. Each time it was presented to the emperor as a symbol of technological and by extension imperial power. However, it was likely used just for grand processions and to impress visiting ambassadors uh, than for actual long navigation. And there is a very, very good reason for that. Because in practice, this beautiful, elegant theory runs head first into a brick wall called reality. The entire system, this entire intricate dance of gears, is predicated on the assumption of perfection. The first assumption is that the two wheels are exactly the same size. And not just kind of the same size, not just close. I mean perfectly identical in diameter. Because if one wheel is even a tiny bit larger than the other, the whole system falls apart. If the left wheel is just one tenth or one percent larger than the right wheel, it will travel slightly further with each rotation. The differential will interpret this as a constant gentle turn to the right. To compensate, it will slowly rotate the pointer to the left. After just one kilometer of travel in a perfectly straight line, the south pointing figure will be off by about 20 degrees. 
after 10 kilometers, it will be pointing north. And we're talking about an era of hand tools and natural materials. Manufacturing two wooden wheels to that level of precision would have been impossible. And this is quite clear here, where you can see the wobble of the wheel. And even if you could manufacture a wheel to that level of precision, what happens when you start rolling? The wheels wear down. One may hit a rock and get a small chip. One may absorb more moisture than the other and sway slightly. Any tiny imperfection, any minute difference introduces an error. And with a system like this, that error accumulates. But there is more. The second equally impossible assumption is that the wheels will never ever slip. The system works by translating the rotation of the wheels into a change of direction. But what if a wheel slips in the mud or skids on a patch of small rocks? If a wheel spins without the chariot moving forward, the differential receives a massive incorrect input. It will think that the chariot has just executed a sharp turn and will swing the pointer wildly off course. You will need a perfectly flat, level, high traction surface for this to even have a chance of working. A parade ground perhaps, but the battlefield in a magical fog that the legend speaks of? Absolutely not. The slightest bump the slightest patch of loose sand, the slightest bit of mud, and your navigation system is shot. Any claims of it being used for serious long distance travel are certainly exaggerations. To solve a problem like this, you will need what engineers call a control system. Think of it as a way for machines to check their own uh, working and uh, correct for mistakes. The thermostat in your house is an example of this. It senses uh, if the room is too cold, and if so, it turns on the heat. That's a control system, a very simple one. But the chariot has no feedback. It has no way to look, for instance, at the sun or the stars and see that it's still pointing in the right direction. Without a control system to intervene, and there is no evidence that there was one, it would have been impossibly advanced for the time, it's just following instruction blindly. Every tiny error will get added to the previous error and the total error will get bigger and bigger. Now, here I need to make a clarification. I said that uh, while the chariot uh, will not work in practice, it will work in theory. However, the story is a bit more complicated than that. The theory will work only if the planet was flat. On a spherical planet, the chariot will be an example of what mathematicians call parallel transport. Imagine you are starting at the North Pole and we want to make a round trip to the equator as displayed. You point the figurine on top of the chariot towards London. We know that a perfect chariot will always keep the figurine pointing towards the same direction relative to our path. Now you move the chariot straight down one of the lines of longitude until you hit the equator. Your figurine is still pointing along the same direction relative to our path. Now you turn the chariot 90 degrees to the right and proceed a quarter of the way around the world along the equator. The chariot will transport the figurine parallel to the original path it was on without any local rotation. Then you turn the chariot towards the North Pole and walk straight back up another line of longitude. Again, the figurine will not experience any rotation. Finally, you have arrived back to the exact spot you started. But look at your arrow. It's no longer pointing towards London. It's now pointing off by exactly 90 degrees, more or less towards Bangkok. This 90 degree error is a clean special case because our path started at the pole. But this effect happens for any closed loop on a curved surface. The angle of rotation depends on the curvature of the surface and the area enclosed by the path. For example, if we took a journey along this new path, which doesn't go all the way to the pole, we will still find that our arrow has rotated when we return, just by a different amount. So even in theory, the south pointing chariot wouldn't work. However, the distances traveled by the chariot will not be long enough for this problem to be significant, because the planet is huge. It is possible to show that the error due to parallel transport on a 100 kilometers long journey will be more than 10,000 times smaller than the error due to a disparity in the wheels of 100 of 1%. That means that even though the theory is technically flawed, in practice this flow would have no effect so for all practical purposes, we can consider the theory correct. So is the South Pointing Chariot a failure? Well, as a practical navigational device, yes. A magnetic compass, which the Chinese wool leather pioneer, was infinitely more reliable. But to dismiss it as a failure is to miss the point. This is a testament of incredible ingenuity. The core concept, uh, using the differential motion of wheels to calculate a change in orientation, is profoundly clever. 
It's a physical manifestation of calculus using uh, uh, rotating parts to integrate motion over time. The South Point in Chariot uh, is a beautiful example of an idea being ahead of the technology of its time. While the theory has some flaws, uh, for all practical purposes it could be considered correct. The only thing missing was the ability to manufacture it with a mind-boggling precision that its own design demanded. It's a reminder that even the most brilliant uh, ideas uh, can be defeated by the simple, messy and imperfect nature of the real world. But here in a museum of modern transports, it stands as a 2,000-year-old testament of the fact that sometimes the journey of an idea is far more important than whether it actually worked or not.